Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this uh, video. This is going to be a tutorial, a step-by-step -step guide on how to turn on the Airbus A330-300 on X-Plane 12. So I hope you guys find this uh, video very useful and this tutorial to your benefit and you can use it on other Airbus models as well. So guys, I made a video beforehand on the same aircraft model but it was on nighttime and there's a few viewers who uh, we're complaining or a little bit upset they can't see so well because it really depends on your monitor setup some people have brighter monitors some people have less if you're watching on a, a tablet or your phone and whenever I render it just gets a little bit darker so it really depends on what you have but most viewers uh, they were happy they say we can see really well we just bump up the brightness setting or some of them said there was no need for that maybe some people have difficulties uh, seeing uh, darker colors perhaps so I decided some viewers told me make the video again but do it on the daytime so here it is and I hope you enjoy it gonna be a cold and dark startup for the Airbus A330-300 and I'm going to try to be as uh, as uh, slow as possible. So guys, this is how the cockpit looks inside the Airbus A330-300 and they've done a really excellent job on X-Plane 12. So the first thing guys we're going to do, we're going to go to the overhead panel, we're going to press on battery 1, followed by battery 2. And then we are going to be pressing on the auxiliary power unit battery. We're going to press on galley, and then we are going to press on commercial. Then we are going to press on generator 1 on the electric section, and then generator 2. And we are finally going to press on the auxiliary power unit generator. The auxiliary power unit is basically like a third motor on board the aircraft. I'm going to click on the bus tie, and stuck behind the aircraft. And the flaps open, it uh, sucks in air like a vacuum and then it feeds the air to the bootstrap system on board the aircraft, which is the air conditioning system, and you can bleed the air into engine one and engine two in order to spool them. Just close these wipers. <coughs> so we have taken the warning off, and press on the auxiliary power unit switch, and we need to wait. We need to wait until the auxiliary power unit is available, and this is gonna be shown on the bottom central display, where it says APU, take the bottom central display off of auto mode just keep it on APU then guys when it's available we are going to start the APU so we switched on seat belt sign is on no smoking sign is on and let's arm the exit light navigation and logo lights on swing on beacon on and strobe and we are not going to be needing the landing lights now or the runway turn off or the taxi since we are not taxiing at the moment so guys we have flap open and uh, we are on the, on the APU page we're just gonna be pressing the APU start switch since the flap has open and now we need to wait until what the auxiliary power unit has done spooling and the APU is fully available. So now as you can see guys, the engine gas temperature for the auxiliary power unit is increasing. It is uh, increasing a very good rate it's at 500 degrees Celsius and it is spooling properly and it's slowly speeding up. We need to wait until it reaches 100%. And here is our gross weight. Uh, so we are at 215,000 kilograms, 215 tons. And we are still not bleeding air since the APU is drying up. So you can hear the vacuum. It's vacuuming air in, into the aircraft. And soon enough, we are going to be hitting the APU bleed. So we can go to air section, press on pack one, pack two. Engine one bleed, okay. APU is available, engine two bleed. Hot air one, and we are going to press on hot air two. So, APU is available. Now we are going to go to the fuel section. We are going to engine 1. We are going to press on L1, then L2, L standby. And then we are going to engine 2, R2, R1, 
and R standby. Simple. And then we are going to the center. And on the center, press on the right, R and L for left tank. Now we are going to the hydraulic section and we are switching on engine one green and electric green. We are going to move to blue engine one and electric standby for blue engine one, yellow engine two. You just repeat that. So it doesn't matter the sequence. Some people ask me, does the sequence matter? It doesn't matter. Okay. So green engine two. Okay. So if you if you began on the right side, doesn't matter from engine two to engine one. But it's better to do it engine one than engine two. Okay. So now we are going to the right hand side of the overhead panel, and we are going to press on PAX system, PAX SATCOM, and IFIC. Then we are going to the flight control section on the right hand side. We are going to be pressing on SEC 2, PRIM 2, and PRIM 3. We are going to, on the ISO valves for the forward, press on that. And this is for the air conditioning. For the bulk, press on that. Hot air. And then we are going to switch cooling from off to normal. And now you can adjust the temperature. So we want it leaning on cold, but not too cold. And for the bulk, it's going to be colder because we may have food in there or uh, remains of individuals we are carrying. So it has to be colder. And then we are going to press the test on the cargo smoke. Okay. And ventilation extract and cabin fans on the ventilation section. So we are completely done with the right hand side section of the overhead panel. So guys, everything looks good. The APU is available. And now we're going to go engine start. Put it from normal to ignition start. Let's first go to the left hand side section. ADIRS. We are going to press on IR1, IR3, and IR2. This is how we have access to our navigational displays. And from off to nav for all three, for ADR1, ADR2, and ADR3. Press on ADR1, ADR2, and ADR3. On the APU section, left-hand side, we're going to test that. OK, perfect. And we are going to go to the flight control turban. And we are going to press on PRIM1. Then we are going to press on SEC1. Easy. On the EVAC section, from Captain, CAPI to CAPI and PURSE. On the GPWS section, press on Terrain, System, Light Slope Mode, and the Flap Mode. On the oxygen, are going to press on crew supply, and we are done. Left hand side section, and we are going to press on APU bleed. So you can hear the APU bleeding, splitting uh, the air to engine one and engine two. I'm gonna switch off this warning. This is normal. Everything looks good. Don't worry about the faults because we haven't started the engines yet, so we're gonna have a fault, but the moment we turn them on, the faults are gonna go away. So we're gonna put engine start from normal to ignition start, and we are going to spool engine one and spool engine two. So now we are on the engine page. You can see the pressure for engine one and engine two increasing, and the M3 for engine one and engine two increasing, they're spooling at a very good rate. And we have to wait until oil temperature has increased. The oil temperature is very low. Engine one and engine two, oil temperature at 15 degrees Celsius. We need to wait until it is above to optimal levels, uh, preferably above uh, 70 degrees Celsius. 
we have to wait. So we cannot take off if the oil temperature is low. We gotta wait until the engine is fully spooled properly and the engine oil temperature increases. So N2 is increasing and uh, we have very good readings, fantastic readings. Actually, this is a, a simulator, so everything's gonna be perfect. But real life is not gonna be like that. It's gonna be very different. You know, you may have problems. You have to detect them from the screens. Put the flaps on one. We are going to be taking off the flap two. So flap one, flap two. And we are going to be arming the speed brake round spoilers. And we have the automatic brakes on RTO or maximum settings on the Airbus A330. So we're going to change it from ignition start to normal again. And so go on the engine page again. And the oil temperature is still low. It's, at, uh, it's increasing slowly. But it's at 40 degrees Celsius. We're going to press airport on the navigation display and change the magnification and uh, 240 so we can see all the aero drones the autopilot section uh, let's see we're gonna keep it at 12,000 so guys we are almost ready for takeoff and let's switch on our landing lights uh, some people say why do we need landing lights when we are taking off so they know you are taking off so even on landing and takeoff you gotta use the landing lights so they know you are taking off okay we're gonna switch off the APU we don't need the APU anymore, so now we have no faults, nothing, everything is uh, perfect. The parking brake is engaged, and we're gonna lock the cockpit door so it's on warm, normal. And uh, let's see, we have already taken uh, clearance for takeoff from uh, runway 16 right on Romeo Juliet Tango Tango. And I just test the lights, see all the lights are working. And all of them are good way to show you how the lights work and it looks uh, really good really nice I really like this cockpit setup they've done an excellent job at it it's really wonderful and uh, let's just switch that off okay so now guys we have no faults up whatsoever we are ready to be taking off so passengers have been briefed and the crew has been briefed and we have a uh, ATC clearance from uh, Tokyo departure tower to take off our first officer has been doing all this and uh, okay, we are going to be departing straight out and maintaining runway heading we are be going to be climbing to 3,000 feet and the, this is a brake fan, you just use it uh, when uh, when you land, the brakes get hot. Sometimes you may need to turn it on if the brakes get hot, but there's no need to. Just showing you guys the cockpit uh, layout. Alright guys, so we're going to spool up to 50% for us and disengage the parking brake. Our rotation speed is going to be at uh, 134 uh, for a V1 and 136, 137 knots for a VR going to be slowly increasing the throttle. We're going to maintain the center line using the rudder. We have flap 2, takeoff configuration, testing at normal. 50% okay, thrust. 60% thrust. Oh. 
maintain a 12 degree pitch. Switching off the landing lights. Landing gear is fully retractive and locked. Maintaining runway heading. Throttle to climb. Retracting flap to flap one. And remember, guys, we are uh, below 12,000 feet. We cannot exceed 250 knots. To be engaging in a slight right turn. We are going to continue our climb. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you find this video very useful. Um, this tutorial to your benefit. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel to know